this morning to the Acts of the Apostles, and we're in chapter number 8. Acts of the Apostles, chapter number 8, please. And down at verse number 26, we'll commence our Scripture reading. Acts of the Apostles, chapter number 8, verse 26. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasures and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near, and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him. And he heard him read the prophet Isaiah, and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I, except some man should guide me? And he had desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the Scripture which he read was this, He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shear, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away, and who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this? Of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same Scripture and preached unto him, Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart that thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went both down into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. And we know that the Lord will add his blessing to the reading of his own precious truth this morning. The text from which the Lord's message comes to us this morning was placed upon my heart Friday evening past week ago. And that text that the Lord is going to minister to our hearts from this morning was confirmed mightily last Lord's Day evening. Because in our prayer meeting before the gospel service, our brother Charlie Shields, in the midst and in the course of his praying, referred to the very Scripture that we have just read together. And the Lord says, there you are. That's the message. And last Lord's Day evening, I was in a telephone conversation with our brother Marcus Hammond. And in the course of our conversation, Marcus happened to say, out of the blue, he said, you'll never guess what sort of a conversation I had with some of my pupils this morning, or this week, rather. And all of a sudden, it was the Lord confirming his message. And that's the way the Lord confirms the message. The text that God wants to speak to us this morning is from the very last little phrase, the question of the Ethiopian eunuch down at the bottom of verse number 36, where he says, asks this question, what doth hinder me to be baptized? I wonder this morning, child of God, Wonder has there someone been here considering that question of late? What doth hinder me to be baptized? I wonder has there somebody been considering baptism in recent days? Wanting to go on in obedience with the Lord. I remember one evening sitting in a gospel service 
The preacher was the late Ivan Thompson. And I remember in the course of his announcements, God spoke to me about baptism. I was saved five years before I was baptized. And I remember him saying to him after the meeting, says, hey, Pastor Thompson, can I have a wee word with you? God spoke to me through your announcements. It's about baptism. What doth hinder me to be baptized? I wonder, child of God, has had a question that's burning into your heart this morning. What doth hinder me? What hinders me from obeying the Lord? What hinders me from walking in obedience? What doth hinder me to be Baptized. I want you to notice that here in Acts of the Apostles, chapter number 8, the Ethiopia eunuch wasn't saved for years. He wasn't saved for weeks. He wasn't saved for months. He was saved, I would say, for about 15 minutes. And all of a sudden, he asks the question, what hinders me from being baptized? You see, child of God, the Ethiopian eunuch this morning did not ignore the importance of being baptized. And the whole scenario is, and the whole truth is, I don't care what we think. That's not what we want, child of God. That's not what we demand. That's what God wants. It's what God demands from you. And it's what God demands from me. In the early, sorry, in 1917, during the Great War, a young soldier was led to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ during a, a ceasefire. And after he was converted to the Lord Jesus Christ, he saw a crater that a German shell had made filled with water. And he said to the Padre that led him to the Lord, he said, now I have to be baptized. I want to obey the Lord. Now I could die tomorrow. And I want to go into heaven being obedient. And he stripped down to his underwear and was baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, believers' baptism this morning, what does the Bible say? Not what we think. What does the Bible say? What does the Bible teach on believers' baptism this morning? Here's what God wants you and I to understand. Believers' baptism is not an option from God for us. It's a command from God to us. Believers' baptism this morning is not an option. It's a command. It's not an option open to our own thoughts. It's a command that is clear according to God's truth. Do you know the two last commands the Lord Jesus left before he went to heaven? The first one was to remember him. The Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and says, Take eat, for this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise, after the same manner, he took a cup. And when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as oft as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye show forth the Lord's death till he come. Do you want to know something, child of God? The Lord's table, the Lord's supper, was the Lord's dying wish for believers before he went to the cross. And how many times, child of God, have you fulfilled the Savior's wish? The second command was baptism. 
believe and be baptized, you read, and go forth baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. How, how long have you been saved, child of God? Now, this is the Lord. This isn't me. How long have you been saved? And you haven't once obeyed any of these two commands. How long are you saved this morning? And you've never broke bread at the Lord's table. It's not an option. It's a command. How long have you been saved and you haven't obeyed the Lord by refusing to stay? How long have you been saved this morning, child of God, and you have never yet been baptized? I have been encouraging some of our young people, and it's not just the young people I'm trying to encourage. I'm trying to encourage you this morning to walk in obedience and to walk in fellowship with the Lord according to His Word. Listen, I can't force anybody to be baptized. Neither can I force anybody this morning to wait at the Lord's table, but I'm encouraging you to walk in obedience to God's Word, because I would fail the Lord miserably if I didn't. And I would fail my ministry if I didn't. And I would fail you miserably if I didn't. Baptism. Believer's baptism. What does the Bible say? I want you to notice, first of all, the clear timing of baptism. Look at verse number 36. It says, They came to a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. I want you to notice the clear timing of baptism. The baptism the Bible teaches comes this morning after conversion. Philip made it clear, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And you see, child of God, you read through the Scriptures, Mark's Gospel 16, verse 16, the Lord Jesus says, Believe and be baptized. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 38, the early church, uh, we see the early church been born. Many of them believed, and they who believed were baptized. And you remember this morning the Philippian jailer, the night he believed, he was baptized the same night. You ask me this morning, do I believe in infant baptism? No, I don't believe in inf infant baptism because it's not taught in Scripture. It's unbiblical. It's unscriptural. You ask me, well, do I believe then in adult baptism? No, I don't believe in adult baptism either because it's unbiblical. And it's unscriptural. You may say to me, well, George, I was baptized as a baby. Well, so was I, and I was confirmed too. But that done nothing, nor it does nothing for anybody spiritually. I'll tell you what it does too. There's many on the road to hell because that's what they're holding on to. There's so many on the road to hell, and that's what they're holding on to this morning. But sure, I was baptized when I was a baby. The Lord Jesus never taught, nor the Bible doesn't teach that you're baptized when you're born. It does teach you're baptized when you're born again. You're baptized when you're born of the Spirit of God, not when you're born in the flesh. A hey, minister. After one of our baptismal services asked the question, he didn't come to me direct, but he asked the question, how or why does George baptize someone when they have already been baptized as a baby? You want to know why? Because it's scriptural to do so. They tell me infant baptism comes from the Old Testament. It's some sort of a symbol. I can't get into it anywhere, but the, what they forget today is this. We're not in the Old Testament system. We're in the New Testament economy. The New Testament church is all about believers 
Believer's baptism after conversion. Believer's baptism is a command that is ordered the moment after we're converted to Christ. There's a whole talk today. Do you know one of the greatest curses is man-made traditions? There's people today and they talk about being a communicant. You can't become a communicant unless you're baptized. Well, I'll tell you something now. The Bible doesn't talk about communicants. You find me anywhere in this Scripture where, where the Bible talks about communicants. The Bible doesn't talk about communicants. The Bible talks about spirit-born, blood-washed Christians. And today there's people and they're eating and drinking damnation to their very soul. And child of God, that's the seriousness this morning. On the day of Pentecost in Acts 2 and 41, it says, And they that gladly received his word were baptized that weren't baptized before it. That's believer's baptism. And the question this morning, God wants you to ask yourself if you're not baptized, why, what hinders me to be baptized? You're saved this morning, but you're not baptized. You're saved this morning, but you're being disobedient to what the Scriptures teach us. The, the big problem we have in Baptist churches today, we're Baptist by conviction, but we're not Baptist by practice. <coughs> believers' baptism, as the Bible teaches, is for believers, it's not for babies. And then I want you to notice, secondly, the clear truth of baptism. Look at verse number 38. Verse num number 38, And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. I want you to notice something. There was much water. You remember John the Baptist in John 3 and 23? It says, And John also was baptizing in Enon near Siloam, because there, there was much water there. There wasn't a wee saucer with a drop of water in it. Much water. You remember the day when the Lord Jesus came to the River Jordan? John the Baptist was being baptized. He was baptizing. You remember the Lord Jesus on that occasion came down into the water and he asked John to baptize him? John forbade him. He says, hold on a second. It should be you baptizing me, not me baptizing you. But the Lord Jesus commanded him to baptize him. Why did the Lord Jesus command for himself to be baptized? I'll tell you why. First of all, it wasn't because he had to show any identification that he was dying to the old life because he had no sinful life to die to. Why did the Lord Jesus get baptized? He got baptized for two reasons, to identify himself with every believer who would then get, uh, believe and be baptized. Secondly, most importantly, he got baptized to point forward as to what he came to do. Going into the waters, the Lord Jesus identified to a lost world, I have come to die. When he was emerged under the water, and we're talking about immersion, when he went underneath the water, the Lord Jesus Christ was identifying to the fact that one day not only will he die, but he'll be buried. And when the Lord Jesus went down into the water, he was identifying that he one day he would die. And then when he was emerged, he was identifying to the day that he'd be buried. And when he came out of the water, he came. That was identifying to the world that he would rise from the dead again. And the moment he came out of the water, what happened? There was a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Yes. His baptism showed forth what he had come to do. 
You know, I like the part where he went underneath the water of the Lord Jesus. When the Lord Jesus went underneath the water that day, do you know what he was showing us? He was showing us the judgment of God in a symbolic way. All thy waves and thy billows have gone over me. When the Lord Jesus went down under the water that day, he was showing us that he was going to bear our sin and that he was going to be emerged under the awful wrath and on the awful judgment of God. When the Lord Jesus went down under the waters of Jordan that day, he was showing us that he was going to take the punishment of our sins when God would unleash the waters, the floodgates of his wrath that would come over him. Through his baptism in the Jordan, he came to symbolize what he came to do for you and me. The clear truth of his baptism was picturing his death and his resurrection. The water symbolizes death. Coming out of the water symbolizes his resurrection. Child of God, what doth hinder me to be baptized? If you're not baptized this morning, what hinders you? What's stopping you? What's preventing you? from obeying the Lord? But here's the clear testimony of baptism. The clear timing of baptism is after conversion. The clear truth of baptism is pointing to Calvary and what the Lord Jesus did for us. But here's the clear testimony of believers' baptism this morning. Look at verse number 39. And when they were come up out of the water. Do you see, child of God, when the Ethiopian eunuch went down into the water? Do you know what he was doing? When any candidate steps forward to get baptized, here's what they're doing. And this is what happens. When a candidate, or when the Ethiopian eunuch will stay on him this morning, when he went down into the water to be baptized, he was publicly identifying himself with the Christ who died for him. He was publicly identifying himself with the death of Christ. Any believer like the Ethiopian eunuch who goes under the waters in immersion is identifying himself or herself with the Christ who was buried. When the Ethiopian eunuch came out of the water that day, like any other candidate, we're commanded this morning that we are to identify not ourselves just with the death of Christ. We're not just to publicly identify ourselves with the burial of Christ. We are to identify ourselves this morning publicly concerning with the resurrection of Christ. And here's the challenge this morning, child of God. What hinders you from identifying yourself with the death of Christ? What hinders you this morning from publicly identifying yourself with the burial of Christ? What hinders you this morning from publicly uh, proclaiming and identifying yourself with the risen Christ? What hinders me? You should be asking yourself that question this morning. What hinders me from identifying myself with the death of Christ? What doth hinder me from identifying myself with the burial of Christ? What doth hinder me this morning from identifying myself with the resurrection of Christ? Are you afraid to? Are you ashamed to? Because this is not an option, child of God, it's a command. 
Baptism also identifies this morning you're prepared to die with Christ. Going into the waters this morning, you identify publicly that you're prepared to die with Christ. You publicly identify saying you're put to death the old life, and when you come up out of the waters again, you're publicly identifying yourself with the new life in Christ. The old is gone, the new has come. When you go into the waters, that's publicly identifying that you are dead to sin. Going under the water publicly identifies that you're dead to the old ways. And coming out of the waters identifies that you're coming out in newness of life. Tell me this this morning, child of God, how long are you saved? And you've been disobedient. How long have you been saved? And you've put this off. This is biblical. This is scripture. This is real. Imagine this morning being bap- refusing to be baptized as being disobedient. It won't keep you out of heaven. The dying thief had no opportunity. He had no time to get baptized, but he still went to heaven. But for those of us today who are in this meeting and you're not baptized and you disobey the Lord, when you die and you see on him the marks of Calvary, you see the wounds in his hands and feet, and you see the marks of Calvary. How do you think you're going to feel when you refuse to identify yourself with him in this way? What doth hinder me to be baptized? What hinders you from obeying the Lord in this way? When you see the Lord in glory and the marks of Calvary, I'll tell you, you won't feel too good when you refuse the Lord's Supper. You won't feel too good. You'll be in heaven, but you won't feel too good. This was his dying wish before he went to the cross. And this is the command that he left us, that we be baptized, that we publicly identify with his death, publicly identify with his burial, publicly identify with his resurrection. As I said, it's not an option, it's a command. As I am answerable to the Lord to encourage you to follow the Lord in this way, you please be assured you'll be answerable to the Lord. It's what you do with his command. And it's my calling, and it's my ministry, and it's my duty. Not to be a person pleaser. I never was, nor never will be. But to be faithful to God's book, and to be faithful to the God's calling upon my life. He's the one. He's my Lord. And can I encourage you to think on these things this morning? What will hinder you? to be baptized, to identify yourself with the Christ who loved you and gave himself for you. And if God has been speaking to your heart this morning, come and see me or see William John. This is not an option. It's a command. May God, by his grace, help you to be obedient.